politics. I ran in politics to legalize gambling. If you Google for great Canadian gambler or Taj professor, you'll come up with John Thurmel. I was a teaching assistant in the mathematics and gambling course, wrote the book on Holden Poker. But I got involved in politics to legalize gambling, but they asked me about inflation and unemployment. And I figured out that it was the interest that causes the trouble. So I kept running an election after election after election. Now they call me King of the Fringe, King of the Poppers. And in 1981, I ran for Prime Minister of Ontario with my little party. In 1993, I ran for Prime Minister of Canada with the Abolitionist Party, one candidate more than the Greens. And if there is going to be an election for Prime Minister of the Planet, everybody knows who's going to be the first candidate, me. Well, you can find me on the internet. I'm known as John the Engineer Turmel. I'm in the anthology of great Canadian characters. And in 2000, I got invited to the United Nations. Do you remember when all the candidates were there? The greatest accumulation of world leaders? Well, I was there too. That's me just above Bill Clinton and the Chinese Premier and Ehud Narafat and Blair and John Turmel. So what was I doing there? Well, I was talking about time-based currency where you get an account at the Bank of Canada, you can borrow what you need to pay off all your mortgages and your debts, and after that, all payments go against principal, and you can pay in cash or in work the time standard of money. So right now, it's the gold standard, the house standard gets you collateral, but your time is worth nothing. I want the Bank of Canada to have the time standard of money. So, look into John the Engineer Turmel, and again, the resolution at the United Nations was passed to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. The Millennium Declaration Resolution C6, the Unilets Resolution. So someday you will have an interest-free bank account and credit card, and I'll be the guy who got it for you. So you can help me in that effort, do your homework, check out the internet, look for John the Engineer, see how time banking could help your community. You used to have a Guelph Let's, you can do it again bigger and better by voting for John the Engineer Turnell. Thank you very much. I ran in Shawinigan when he resigned in 86. And I used to pick at Parliament every Thursday when they changed the bank rate for five years. So yeah, I picketed John and knew him very well. And I also brought him seven pounds of marijuana in 2003. I should have mentioned the marijuana story. I didn't have the article. That's why I forgot it. You brought John Gretchen marijuana. White hard hat at the United Nations. Okay, could you just turn just a bit so it's squared? Okay, I'm just going to zoom in and get it. I mean, those are all the top world leaders on that page, and I'm at the top of the page. <laughs> and finally, my claim to gambling fame. The great Canadian gamblers play hold and poker like a bookie. Turmel two-step hold them poker call out system study course and exercise book of 15,000 problems. Yes, sir, my claim to poker fame. Mm -hmm. How are you? Good, good. Well, just can't see. So that's the order of who? I'm sorry? Who's that order of? It's, it's the, at the request of the organizers that's putting on the evening. And that's the chamber? Yes, it is. The rock No independent video photography allowed. Is there a sign or any kind of rules sheet that uh, can be made public for that? I would like to just check your camera, please. And But there's no rules. Yes, it is our house rule always, and there are some slight rules. It is our house rule for Riverbend that there's no videotaping in the theater. For events like this, there's clearance given to the media. What about a candidate? No, they're not. A candidate is not allowed to have an independent videographer? Your camera, sir. An independent candidate is not allowed to have a videographer? 
The chamber members here are obviously escorting patrons up a back way instead of around John Turmel, who is obviously protesting yet another ejection uh, from a debate. We await the arrival of police. Uh, for yet this uh, clearly ejection of uh, John Turnell. I sure hope you're uh, hearing this. This is being broadcast through uh, speakers in the ceiling of this theater. And a gentleman just told me that it's being broadcast on the exterior of the building as well. The producer uh, just walked by me and made reference to John Tamal being finished and said clearly, fantastic, I didn't hear a darn thing he said. So we arrive and we're waiting for police to eject Mr. Tamal from another debate. See, police have uh, arrived, looks like, to remove a registered candidate from an all candidates meeting. Can't say it surprises me. Remember, Mr. Tunnell paid a thousand dollars and did all the required paperwork. This will be Mr. Tunnell's sixty seventh election.
Police cars we have here. Police arriving. Started, it is important to review some of the policies and procedures around this discussion, which is really what it is as opposed to a debate. Each of the major parties running for federal office have been invited to make presentation to the citizens and businesses of Guelph Wellington on a variety of business issues that fall within the influence of our federal government. The Guelph Chamber of Commerce is committed to helping in the electoral process by stimulating discussion here tonight, afterwards in our community. Not all the parties are being addressed, topics are limited, and the size of our gathering is also somewhat limited. But a win tonight would be that more citizens cast their ballots than would have otherwise cast ballots. We hope that these voters will be more informed as a result of tonight's meeting. To be clear, the Guelph Chamber does not endorse any political party and also does not recommend restricting voting to parties that aren't here. A public discussion such as this is one of the many ways to be informed. Many Canadians have brought us to this point through defense of our democratic rights as well as by working within our political system to continue to refine and strengthen our country. Our response needs to be one of active engagement by knowing party policies and then exercising your right to select your representative in Ottawa. The topics chosen tonight reflect a business outlook as well as a community outlook. And the Guelph Chamber of Commerce is the voice of business in our community but also represents all citizens within Guelph. The business issues we will address fall within the current framework of eight key business areas and priorities that are being discussed by the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and at the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, both of which Guelph was a founding member in 1925 and in 1911, respectively. The Guelph Chamber of Commerce was incorporated in 1868, so our, our chamber goes back a little farther than that. We will ask each candidate their party's position on topics specific to Guelph Wellington that fall within these eight key areas. When a response includes reference to other candidates' parties, the candidate will be given 60 seconds to provide clarification from their party's standpoint and to provide balance to our discussion. We need some balance tonight. I think we can all agree. The debate generally has the conclusion of a winner or a loser. A discussion has a conclusion of a greater awareness of all the thoughts. So we would like to begin our discussion based on these, on these principles. We will have two minute opening statements given when we can by our main leader, leaders of our main parties present here tonight. We will then have one minute questions given to each member with the opportunity to rebut anything that's said against or, or referring to their party or their party leader or to themselves. So we're hoping that we'll be able to get started with this discussion soon. We are following freedom of speech. The chamber is behind, the chamber is behind freedom of speech, but we're also trying to respect the citizens' right to complain and within within the, the limits of the law, we'll deal with the problem. So hopefully we will have officers here to help us with that part of the problem and they can handle it as they will.
I'm going to give you, while we're waiting, I'm going to give you some of the outline from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in their statement from January 2008, where they talk about the Canadian business agenda, something that is near and dear to all the families in this region. The global marketplace is being transformed with new competitors entering every day. The opportunities for Canada to lead and succeed in this new world have never been more compelling. That's why Canada must act now to address the skills shortages, to build a competitive tax and regulatory system, and to boost our competitiveness, both in Canada, in North America, and around the world. We need to break down trade barriers and develop new markets for Canadian goods and services, both at home in Guelph and abroad. We must cre be creative in responding to Canadian communities' interest in the environmental sustainability, and we need to support an energy policy that provides security for Canadians, promotes our export potential, and is both economically and environmentally sustainable. Our fiscal policies have to reflect these facts. The government needs to respond with smart, strategic policy decisions. Fiscal policies must include a competitive tax system that encourages work effort, saving, investment, and risk-taking. There needs to be a continued emphasis on further reducing the federal debt and targeting program spending to areas that will boost productivity and competitiveness. Both the Canadian and the Ontario Chamber of Commerce support transfer of surplus to municipalities because it's within municipalities that employment begins. Jobs start here with independent businessmen and with small and medium-sized enterprises and also with large enterprises. And to have municipal support is very important if there is surplus in other areas. And now we'll take a break for our, seat, our, our, our station. Rogers is hosting this debate and we thank them for being here. We also have CPAC here from Ottawa for national coverage. Thank you. Again, as an apology from the Guelph Chamber of Commerce for this disruption tonight, the candidates have asked me to wait until the disruption passes before they speak so that their words can be adequately heard, and we will respect that. We do, live, we do live in a democracy, and that's fantastic. And in the meantime, I'll continue to let you know the Chamber of Commerce from Canada's outlook on some of these issues, which are being addressed by the candidates. Again, the Chambers of Commerce are not here to make political statements, but are here to put out some of the co topics for conversation. An area that will catch up to us in the future that is gaining ground is skill shortages. People and their skills play an important role in a nation's productivity performance and, the Canadian de and as the Canadian demographics change, the Canadian economy is facing a skill shortage that will only accelerate. Canadian manufacturers and exporters estimate this shortage to reach a million people by 2021. They are, they are, they are. Okay, the form and extent of the individual's involvement in the labor market is affected by such factors as incentives on income tax system, employment insurance, education and training, and recognition of foreign credentials. Access to skilled labor is also affected by immigration policies and whether skilled immigrants are able to successfully participate in the labor market. What we are doing is we're on a yellow feed right now. Some of this will be used and some of it won't be used until the authorities are here. Competitiveness in Canadian business is something that's essential in the years to come. The global marketplace is being transformed and new competitors are entering every day. To ensure Canada's prosperity, we need to be globally competitive and internationally focused. The federal government should lead by example 
through a commitment to international engagement. And to that end, Chambers of Commerce across Canada are doing what they can to educate their members on how to do business internationally. In September, we will be holding a, a session here in Guelph with Hong Kong coming to tell us how to start businesses in Hong Kong for our small and medium-sized manufacturers. Breaking down these trade barriers, regula regulatory cooperation will facilitate the movement of goods and services. and people at the border. And Guelph has some of the finest police officers in Canada. We're here to meet a few of them. We'll call for another station break. Uh, they're asking for a five-minute break on the panel to calm down. No, I'm sorry. We have to. We've got 30 seconds. Sorry, you guys. Okay, I'll re. I'll Let's see if they've taken them out back way here. My name's John Turmel, and I got into politics on two lines of poetry. And it was, why represent our collateral with their chips for a fee, when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? Now, if you Google for great Canadian gambler or Taj professor, I come up. I was TA in the mathematics of gambling course for four years. But I figured out that interest is the reason we're all being kept poor. So, I kept running in election after election after election to try and reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer, which has no depositors, to let me log on, borrow what I need to pay my mortgages and my student loans, and after that all payments go against principal. And that is how interest-free banking at the Bank of Canada works, because they got no depositors. They force us to go to the loan sharks, the Royal, the Scotia, the TD, in between pay interest. I want to access the Bank of Canada's computer. Well, after all those elections, I got into the Guinness Book of Records, but I also got invited to the United Nations during the Millennium Assembly. You remember when all these major politicians were there, the biggest group in history? Well, I was there too. There's the President of the U.S., President of China, Prime Minister of Britain, Prime Minister of Israel, John Turmel. Well, I got to do the speech on banking. And in the Millennium Assembly Declaration, it says we're going to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. So someday you're going to be able to go to the Bank of Canada's computer, log on like PayPal, borrow what you need to settle up all your debts, all payments go against principal, and you can pay it with cash or with work. It's called the time standard of money. 
And if you Google for time standard of money, I come up because I coined it at the United Nations. Someday, and it's just the gold standard of money and the stuff standard of money, it's going to be the time standard of money too, and people's worth will be collateral, not just their stuff. So, you've got to do your homework. You want to stay debt slaves all your life? If you Google for anti-poverty engineer, I come up for anti-poverty software. Do your homework, John Jermail. Thank you. Absolutely, now's the opportunity to change that. You have to appreciate the difference between scarcity and poverty. Scarcity, well, you got no stuff but lots of money. Poverty, you got lots of stuff but no money to buy it with. Well, right now what we got is poverty. Lots of stuff in the stores but no money to buy it with. Well, what causes poverty? Usury. Wow, word from the Bible. Mortgage means death gamble in French. You get the suckers to all put up their collateral, and then they all borrow 10, and they all promise to bring back 11, and at the end of the game, 9 guys got 11, 10th guy gets squeezed out of his death gamble, and you take his house. Resulting not in more money chasing the collateral, but the same chips chasing less collateral. I'm the inventor or the deriver of shift B inflation. Inflation isn't too much money chasing the goods. It's too much foreclosure. Well, anyway, if you go into the Bible, Isaiah 55, you who are hungry and have no money, come buy and eat. Well, how do you buy when you got no money? Credit's okay. It's Nehemiah who said, let the exacting of interest saw. So interest-free loans from the Bank of Canada, an interest-free credit card for everybody in the country, including Junior and Beaten Mamas, and everybody, if they don't like their lot in life, they can go stay at a hotel on their new interest-free credit cards. So it's a kind of an independence and economic freedom when you have direct access to the bank of your state. And anything you borrow from Big Daddy up there, you can pay back with work because he'll let you, even if you couldn't come up with the cash. So that's how heaven on earth works. Give us today tomorrow's bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. If I'm not chasing anybody for debts, and no one's chasing me for debts, and we got tomorrow's bread, Jesus said, call that heaven. I'm here to engineer heaven. And also we want to... Uh Give, uh, this is the most amazing gift to people who are working now and paying off student loans and they're in debt. Upon, if they have graduated, the Greens would forgive under our cash shift 50% of the student loan cost, and that's for students entering the system now. Upon graduation, you'll receive 50% of your lo student loans forgiven, because the average student now has over $32,000 in loans, and that is a debt, that's also a debt sentence. Thank you. Answers to the last question. John, you have 30 seconds. Okay. This is the 1988 Green Party economic platform where they used to endorse less green dollars. They were on the time banking bandwagon. But then, you know, these are greens. They could have had this rocket engine powering their party program. Instead, they put it in their lawnmower. Now it's off their program completely. So the software, the anti-poverty software, if you Google for it, they used to have it on their program, and somebody managed to take it off. They used to propose interest-free banking for people as green, and someone had them take it off. Thank you, John. And of course, I'm going to think out of the box. It's not a question of how we stop using it. We can actually cut back, except... The economic competition won't let us. We have to ship our softwood lumber south to the states and they have to ship their softwood lumber here. We have to ship our tomatoes somewhere else, they have to ship their tomatoes here. We ship our wheat there, they ship their wheat here. We ship our steel there, they gotta ship their steel here. We ship our cars there, they ship their cars here in this insane competition. Why? Because everybody, every country borrows a hundred billion, pay to produce their goods, inflate their price to one ten, but they gotta pay back to the bank. Death gamble worldwide. Well guess what? The home market only has a hundred billion they borrowed. They can only buy a hundred billions worth out of the price tax of one ten. Less than ten you gotta export. Everybody! Everybody has to export what we can't buy at home because of the interest built into the price tags. 
So we have this insane competition to export instead of having all self-sufficient businesses at home. Okay, mortgage, death gamble, the musical chairs game of economic competition is caused by interest rates. Giving companies and people an access to the Bank of Canada eliminates that insane competition because they don't have to come up with 11 when they only printed 10. It's like musical chairs where you add the 11th chair so everybody can survive. So, getting rid of the interest can cut that need to export what we can't sell at home. And the whole rationale for exporting is gone. Now we don't need to export anything but our surpluses. And we have ourselves take care of our home markets. And that's the only way we can cut energy use by eliminating the inefficient consumption of fuel in the insane economic competition to pay 11 when the banks only loaned us 10. Death, gamble, mort, gage. End it by abolishing interest. I believe John was next. Well, back in 1993, I went on Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana. I got charged with possession for the purpose of trafficking to the Prime Minister. But I got 4,000 charges dropped. And no lawyer's ever done that, and I didn't even mention my name. But my point of my other candidates is this. I was barred from the debate two nights ago. Do you think I should have been barred from the debate tonight? Anybody? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, out of the box again. We don't need more doctors. We don't need more hospitals. We don't need better health care. We need less sick people. Right? Change diets. Eat more natural stuff. Get off the bottle. Get on the herbal. Did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these people who've been dying of cancer, they just discovered that, oh, marijuana kills cancer. They've known it for 30 years and they didn't tell you. So all your family and friends who croaked, they knew and they let them die. Not only that, University of Saskatchewan last year discovers marijuana regrows brain cells. Alcohol burns them, destroys them. You got a hangover the next day when you do alcohol. Marijuana, you're regrowing brain cells. That's why it's so much fun. And that's why I'm so sharp and they're so dull. So anyway, yeah, we just got to switch. They got you on so many bad chemicals. Get off the chemical, get on the herbal, get off the bottle, get on the herbal, get off the processed foods, get on the natural. And that way, we won't need more doctors, we won't need more health care. But the point is, if everybody had an interest-free credit card, everybody could afford their doctors, like in the 50s, <coughs> when everybody could afford to pay their doctors. So again, once we're all rich enough, and we have access to our credit line at the Bank of Canada, and we can afford to pay the good doctors whatever they want, but we don't need insurance plans and government for paupers and stuff like that. So, fits in the money always comes first. And of course, so many industries are threatened by the legalization of marijuana, and they cannot allow marijuana to be legal, or the pulp and paper industry goes under, the, um, the cotton industry goes under, the alcohol industry goes under if marijuana is legalized, so what do they do? They pay the Liberals and the Tories and Parliamentarians to keep it illegal. Well, as soon as all the companies have an interest-free credit line, so they won't go broke when marijuana crops come online and put the pulp and paper industry out of business, no more big trees, you can have little ones that a farmer can deal with. Don't need big loans. It's going to happen, and it's all tied together. Thank you. I believe that the two parties with those strongest policies are the Greens and the NDP. My question is directed to Tom and Mike. Would you please tell me why I should vote to NDP over Green and vice versa? And to the other candidates, please answer that question. Why should I vote Green or NDP? Candidates to respond to the question, just to be fair. What I asked, frankly, was if yeah, yeah, somebody we... else wanted to comment, Please tell me why I should vote NDP or Green. Right. Or not. Answer that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, sir. Or not. <laughs> in, in, logic, in logic, there's or not. So my point is, neither of, these poly, neither of these parties has a program to deal with interest rates. And now that prices are going up, the bankers are going to say, hey, to fight price rises, we're going to have to increase the interest rates to all the businesses. And that's going to bring down prices. 
And every time you hear about inflation and increased prices, you're going to hear about the interest rate medicine. How raising the interest for businesses makes them lower their prices. Well, the truth is they pass it along and they're lying to you and we're in for a big problem with interest rates coming right up. Why? Is it all up already? I'm standing up here, sir, because you're not answering the question. I'm Why you shouldn't I'm, vote for them? I'm standing up on the point of order. You were asked, okay, why you should vote for the NDP or the Green. A question that excludes everybody but those two guys. Is that fair? That's the issue. There is no, there is I want to say else. why not. You want to know why? I want to tell you why not. Can you explain? I want to know which way I should vote. You can't exclude Please people that ask. way, you know. Well, You've done a shot, not us. Have? That wasn't fair. You don't play fair, sir. I believe Gary was next. Well, I think you should vote. Well, I've done my best to give you my vision of an interest-free world when you don't have to pay interest to loan sharks and there's enough money to do everything that has to be done. And it's up to you to do your homework, to go out there and check to see whether a guy with a degree in applied science, the only high-tech candidate up here, really makes sense, or if these guys have the vision, which to me is more the same, of something new. Have you heard anything new out of the other people here tonight? But have you heard anything new out of me? Well, yeah, I'm the guy who can say, I'll bet my vision is correct. I got cash. I can bet that I can deliver everything I promised because the software works. It's in 58 countries. Just Google for time banks. If you don't do your homework, like Bill Eberhardt said, you've got a right to suffer as much poverty as you want. Well, guess what? The cause of poverty is usury. The solution is using an interest-free, usury-free software. It's out there. You used to have a Guelph Quest. Somebody can reteach you how to do it. No matter how you cut it, they're talking alms. They're talking charity, handouts. Government either loan sharks it to you, or they give you a handout when you're busted. But they'll never do the perfect in-between. Lend it without interest. Don't loan shark, but demand the payment of it back. So it's better than giving it to them in charity, and it's better than loan sharking it to them, which will break them. Well, the United Nations Millennium Declaration has the resolution C6 for a time-based currency someday. It's established in 58 countries now. Argentina went broke seven years ago. The banks broke down. Two years ago, they paid off all their IMF World Bank debt. How'd they do that? Didn't make the news. It was their time barter banks. They went from half a million members to seven million members in six months. And that had so much local currency, allowed them to pay off their international debt. So Argentina paid off all their international debt, and it didn't make the news. We could too. But you've got to look into time banking, see how you can set it up in wealth. Thanks, John. Okay. I want to answer the question, not comment on anything. You have 30 seconds. Is that right? Yeah. You have 30 seconds. It was because the question wasn't directed to you. You have 30 seconds to comment. Oh, I wasn't in there. Well, my reform of the welfare system is give everybody an interest-free credit card and then cut them off. And you can buy what you need, go negative, do your best to pay it back. And if you die before you pay it back, we dip it up over the whole database we all chip in to cover. It's like fire insurance. There's a program on my website. No one pays fire insurance premiums anymore. If there's a fire, we take the program, stick it in, divvy up the cost between the whole database, pay up front. I mean, don't pay up front, pay as you burn. Well, that can be done, the same thing with loans. Thanks, John. It's okay, there's a lot there. Just think about it. Well, the arts have always thrived when they had a population with jobs and spare money to spend. And restaurants, too. So, if we can make the population rich, then the arts don't need handouts all the time. And let's face it, what they're talking about is charity, right? These guys, are their only answer is always charity. Give them a handout, give, you know, not alone, not, they got to pay back, but charity. Well, I'm saying, look, every troupe, every theater, every artist, Interest-free credit card. And if you can pay it back with your production, good for you. 
otherwise get a regular job and pay it back. But the point is, in a vibrant society with a lot of working people, yeah, the arts and the restaurants and the places are treasured because people have the money to spend on them. This bit about accepting a society where everybody's poor and then...
and then you spend an hour for him, then an hour, then an hour, and it gets traded around. It's the same thing in France with the système des charges locales. It's in 58 countries. Twelve used to have a wealth less 20 years ago. There was a green riot in Philadelphia. Well, guess what? Let's used to get a green program in 1988. Now, I told you I was a green uh, libertarian soul friend. I was thrown out of the greens. I think you want to try not to tell you I was thrown out of the greens. They're thrown out of the libertarians, thrown out of the soul friends. What is it about this software that upsets them so much? Well, it's not part of the Green Party platform. You won't find interesting money there no more. But I'm saying that you've got the Edmonton Lex, you've got British Lex, you've got Lexes all over Canada, and all it means is that you have your list of things that people in your neighborhood are willing to do for you in exchange for an IOU for an hour. How about the overseas? Pay for an IOU for a night of accommodation back in Canada for 39 nights out of 40 overseas. People put me up in exchange for an IOU for a night back in Canada. No one tell. So I'm saying it's all right there. You've got to check it out and build it again. Well, of course, it's dysfunctional. Look at the kind of people who get in. Don't have the time in these few seconds to educate you 
Kids go to my head because in the American version, they put me on the same page as the world's biggest pig. <laughs> Yeah. 